What's up, Discord fans? Welcome back to Trash Talk. Ben Lima Kipadila, and today I am so, so high because we have a special guest. Straight from Houston, we have the newest Tangerang Hawks import player, Adam Dreisler. Adam, how you doing, man? Hello, thanks for having me. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here. Hey, man, I really appreciate you. We never met before. Thank you for replying to my DM and doing this interview. I really appreciate you. And oh, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for reaching out. Yes, yeah, sir. Hopefully, uh, I'm not disturbing you watching your beloved <laughs> University of Houston playing right now against Oregon Ducks. Uh, Adam, uh, not a lot of uh, basketball fans in Indonesia knows you yet because uh, you are a new import uh, coming in for next season. But yeah, let's let's see what let's see what what you've been up to these days, man. Before you get heading to Indonesia next week. Um. Yeah. Just uh, making sure I'm uh, I'm ready, staying in shape, uh, working out every day, and just mm-hmm. making sure I, I bring that level of professionalism and make sure that I'm I'm ready for you know, getting to know my teammates and playing with those guys. So I'm excited. Is it hard, though, for you to get back into things? Because we know 18, we've been out for 18 months. You know, there's no, yeah. no uh, professional league that going on for 18 months. So now you're trying to get back into things. Is it, was it harder for you to get back into shape and, you know, basketball uh, rhythm again? No, uh, well, I mean, staying in shape is, is just a, mm-hmm. a lifestyle at this point. I'm always going to stay in shape and play basketball I, I love the game mm-hmm. but prepare once you know that a season is coming up it's a different um mindset mm-hmm. it's like now I'm preparing to play against somebody or with another team and that just kind of motivates you to work even harder so I'm I'm really excited for this and yeah uh you uh we talked about this before the interview that you played in Japan for two seasons Let's talk about the experience. How did you like it playing in Japan? Um, it was amazing. I think um, for me, um, coming from college and leaving college to go play pro um, was a big adjustment, especially when most of the people that play college ball expect they have dreams of the NBA. Yes. And for me, I'd always had my sights set on the NBA. And um but at the end of the day, basketball is basketball and I'll play anywhere. So when I got the opportunity to play in Japan, it was just, it was surreal to me. And I just wanted to make sure that I play my best basketball and um, Japan treated me so well. And I had a great time. How did you like the food though in Japan? Everything is bomb over there. <laughs> it's, it's definitely changed. Uh, it's changed my, uh, my eating habits over here now. And now I find myself always eating it, it really opened me up to different foods of different cultures because now I'm trying different cultures' food. I, before that, I had never really been open to it. So are you a big fan of sushi now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, that's good. That is good to hear, though. Uh, but yeah, talking about uh, having a dream going to the NBA, I know that you were part of the 2017 uh, Summer League squad with the Rockets. Can you just talk about what, uh, what did you learn from that experience? You know, um, going through that I, I whole process. So much. In such a short period of time, you mm-hmm. you're kind of thrown into a, a group of guys who come from all different backgrounds. Some of them are, are mm-hmm. this is their first professional experience. Mm-hmm. Some of them are coming out of college, mm-hmm. and some of them are three year NBA veterans, yeah. just playing on a summer league team. So you're playing against so many different people and. And you're really just learning and soaking it all in. Like I, for me, there were, it was not only the, some of the vets and the different people that you've been watching all year, you know, some of them in college, some of them, you saw them play a season ago on an yeah. NBA roster. So uh, just watching what they do and trying to conduct yourself in that way, or try to take that same approach and emulate them was, uh, was really helpful for me. I think, um going into the rockets uh practices and stuff i really hadn't shot that many threes and when on our first practice we get there and and coach d'antoni walks in and tells everybody hey we don't want any three uh any <laughs> any mid-range shots we only want threes. <laughs> and um 
from that point on, I had to adjust and start, you know, shooting a lot more threes in my game. So it really helped me because after that, uh, when I went back and played in Japan, it was, um, you know, all of a sudden now I had the three in my arsenal. So it just really improved my game. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity and, and being able to play against some of those guys and learn from them. It was amazing. I know summer league is such a fun time. Also, you know, I love going to summer league. So I know it's it's everybody trying to make it. You know, in summer league, trying to get scouted and everything. So I I bet it was a great great opportunity for you too. And man, you you, you met with Coach D'Anthony. You know, Mike D'Anthony is like one of the best offensive coach in the NBA. So did you get a chance though to have a conversation with him during that? Uh, time? I had a few conversations with mm -hmm. him, mostly just picking his brain about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what he thinks about the offense, what he, what he expects a team to look like. And for him, it was, it was quick shots. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we get down the floor and we're running like ants <laughs> to our spots and we're running around the three point line yeah. and just, you know, pass, pass, shoot or dribble up and shoot. It was a, it's a very fast style of play. And Did then on like the end, we just kind of try to try to yeah. shade people and, we're, we play like a positionless game. So it, it was definitely my first time kind of playing in that way. But um, he's such a brilliant mind and he really, really thinks the game. He's very cerebral. But the game is like that though now, right? Uh, do you feel like uh, basketball is like positionless game right now? Like you barely see a natural big man nowadays, you know? Yeah, I think so. It's, mm. it's definitely a lot different. And mm. I, I think... It's a it's a more interesting game now. Instead of people only being good at one thing, like a tall guy being able to rebound, now you you see seven footers taking threes. So uh, I think it's good for the game. It's yeah. definitely it's interesting. And I know I love it too. So are you flying out to Indonesia to Jakarta next week? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are you excited though to finally leave Houston, <laughs> the yeah. <other> country? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm definitely excited. I've, I've never been, so okay. this is gonna be my first time, and I'm just gonna try to learn everything I can. It's gonna be an amazing experience, and so far, everyone uh, that I've talked to with the organization has been so amazing. So I'm so anxious to to meet them. It's gonna be awesome. Have you done any research though about Indonesia? <laughs> um, I a little, little things. Uh, uh -huh. um, obviously, it's nothing compared to actually going there and, and yeah. having experience and, and and witnessing the culture for yourself. But I think it's just little interesting things. Like I think somewhere I read there's like twelve ways to say no and six ways to say yes. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, and little things like that. And, okay. Um, but I'm excited. I definitely want to witness it firsthand. And um, what are the three things that you have to bring from Houston to Indonesia? Oh, <laughs> well, I always bring, mm -hmm. I bring my blender. Okay. For I, protein shakes? Or yeah. I, I, okay. I love, I love protein shakes. Oh, okay. yeah. I always bring, and this one's weird. Uh, the, the next two go, they they kind of go together. Okay. I bring a waffle iron. Oh, okay. Mini, so. <laughs> it's a mini waffle iron. Yeah, okay. And I bring a bottle of syrup. A bottle of syrup? Maple syrup or what? Yeah, maple syrup. Okay. It's so, it's so, so weird. Your, so you love your waffles, huh? Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where some mornings you just, Gotta have a waffle. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just gotta make sure that that's, that's available. Is that your favorite breakfast or what? Yeah, I, I love all kinds of breakfast. Mm -hmm. I, I can, but I'm, I'm weird about it. I can eat breakfast in like afternoon uh -huh. for dinner. I, I'll eat breakfast at any time. I love breakfast food. So, and waffles are just, they're amazing. So I just have like a small, Waffle makers. <laughs> waffles are amazing. Since you bring up waffles, that uh, I've been I've been going to back and forth to Portland. I don't know if you tried this restaurant, Screen Door. Have you tried Screen Door before? Screen Door. I haven't been there yet. Oh damn! You have to try. They have the best chicken and waffles in Portland. So next time okay. you go, 
Uh, it's in downtown Portland. It's on uh, okay. it's on. Yeah, if you're going to Portland, I got a breakfast spot to recommend to you. Definitely. Oh yeah, give me one. Give yeah, me you one. should definitely go to Cafe Dewberry. Oh, I'm that is try that. Okay. The Blazers. When my okay. dad was playing, that was their favorite restaurant. And they okay. had they had the best French toast ever. Oh, French toast! Oh my god, yeah. that's my favorite French toast. <laughs> Ca- Cafe Dewberry, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to Portland next weekend for the Blazers oh, and Celtics game. Gotta, so, gotta go. so I'm going to try that. I'm going to let you know about that one. All right. <laughs> All right. So next, we're going to go back again to Tangerang Hawks. Okay. Uh, did you watch the draft? Yeah, I did. I did. Mm-hmm. I uh, woke up. <laughs> <laughs> 7 a.m. <laughs> it was really nice. I, yeah. I thought the, the whole production and everything was amazing. Uh, it was really fun to watch and I didn't know what people were saying for half of it. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. They, they stepped it up though. Last season was suck, but this season <laughs> they stepped they stepped their game up for the uh draft night. But what was your reaction though? Did you expect to be drafted um, during that draft? Yeah, I had I had talked to the team beforehand and uh, they kind of let me know that they were looking at me. So but of course it, it's nothing like actually finding out that you did get drafted and yeah me and my agent were just jumping up and down excited about it so it was really amazing and uh quick question like how what makes you interested though playing the idl um mm. for me it's yeah it seems like a really good league i mean everything is well done um everything just looks great mm. it's a great place to play basketball and uh for me i'm just excited to play so i think for me, I'm okay and comfortable playing anywhere, uh-huh. and I'm happy that it's going to be in Indonesia. And what was the initial conversation like, though, with your coach? What was his um, expectation of you? Yeah, we haven't mm-hmm. talked very much, mm-hmm. but for us, it was mostly just um, being excited to to play on his team, and he's excited to coach everybody. Mm-hmm. He seems like a really, really nice and, and really – really great coach so mm-hmm. i'm excited to play for him and excited to get to know all my teammates too yeah this is a new team though so i'm, yeah. I'm, I'm very curious too about how they're gonna do uh how, how they're gonna do this uh next season but mm-hmm. yeah i forgot my next question <laughs> but, but yeah uh ibl is a is a good league uh, a lot of good imports playing in the ibl too so hopefully you're gonna make a new a lot of new friends too um mm-hmm. during playing the ibl but mm-hmm. Indonesia, do you like spicy food? Because a lot of spicy food in Indonesia. Um, I'm a little bit, um, <laughs> I'm kind of bad about spicy food. Oh, shit. Okay. But I'm going to try it. I mean, why not? Let's, let's okay. give it a try. Okay. Because <laughs> in Indonesia, it's a lot of rice and a lot of spicy food. So hopefully you're going to be ready for that. <laughs> Well, rice is one of my favorites, so mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be good there. The spicy food, maybe I'll definitely give it a try. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think I, 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 I'm not good with spicy food too. So <laughs> um, yeah, I like I like sweet stuff. That's that's what I like. <laughs> Probably you the same thing, right? <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's talk about uh, music. I know you are a music guy. I know you like mm-hmm. to play music. Uh, where did yeah. that love come from? Um, honestly, out of nowhere, um, no one in my family played music. Um, I, I guess I would just listen to music as a kid and, and I just wanted to create it. I wanted to make it and I just wanted to play instruments. I, okay. I would see people play. And then when I got my hands on one, I would just <laughs> play it every yeah. day. And then eventually I, I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm done with this instrument. Let me go learn another instrument. So I would go learn the piano and then I would go learn the drum and the bass. And it then I just started making songs and just messing with music. And it just became a, it's kind of like basketball. It's something like the more you play it, the more mm-hmm. fun it gets. Because, you know, when you start off, you can barely dribble. And then the next thing you know, you're going between the legs and yeah. it's just a lot more fun that way. So music is the same thing. Who's your favorite musician? Musician. Um, that's tough. I uh, I love so many artists and so many musicians. I think for for me, it's probably 
I was a big fan of Queen growing up. Oh wow! Oh yeah! Oh, so, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh so, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not listening? Anybody recent right now? Oh, I'm listening to everybody recently. Like yeah. there's so many cool artists out. Like um, you know, like like Bruno Mars is amazing. Oh, Bruno Mars is amazing. Uh, you got so many talented artists out there. I, I listen to everybody. It's yeah. To me, they're all really cool. What was the last song that you listened to? Last song I listened to, it's uh, what was it? I was listening to uh, I was listening to Drake. Oh, Drake! Okay. Yeah, it was actually like a few hours ago. I was actually running the park with my dad, and he, like we had our both had our earphones in, so we weren't talking to each other. <laughs> I was listening to Drake that way. Uh, talk about your dad. So you still work out with your dad? Yeah, I um for us it's kind of like when we hang out, we love to mm -hmm. always be doing something like an activity. So we'll go play tennis or we'll go run the park or we'll go lift weights or just do something or, or go in the gym and shoot some shots. So uh for us it's it's just fun to kind of bond over things. Like we we definitely bond over sports and basketball. So mm. Uh, we're always just hanging out and doing something, something silly. Yeah. You're the only one, right? That plays basketball, right? In your yeah, family, I'm like professionally, right? Yeah, uh, my brother and sister mm -hmm. just kind of didn't like basketball. So, oh, okay. Um, oh, actually, my oldest sister, she she was she was the first one to play basketball, mm -hmm. but um, it kind of stopped in high school for her. Okay. So. But when I uh. When I came around, I was the tallest and most athletic and most similar build to my father. So it just seemed natural that I would one day play basketball. So your dad probably talked to you the most, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he talks to all of us. He's, he's, such, a, he's such a nice uh, guy. He's, he's into so many things. My brother, is a, he makes video games. Oh, my wow. sister is a director. My other sister is a, a therapist and she um, kind of is a minister. And uh, my father loves everything that we do. It's actually really cool. That's really cool though. I, I, I think I've watched your, uh, your dad a couple of times during his Rockets days. But I can't remember because I was still small probably when I was <laughs> watching him. But I know I watched him probably like a couple of times already. But what was the best basketball advice? that your dad has given to you? Um, the best advice he gave me, obviously I've, I've taken, there's been a lot of advice. Mm -hmm. but I think the best thing that he's told me was to just make it your own. Okay. Um, there were so many times uh, growing up where I tried to be just like him. I would mm -hmm. watch his videos and just try to copy every move. Oh shit. Uh -huh. And like after a while, he was just like, hey, Adam, be yourself, you know, make it yours. You know, you're trying to copy me. And it's, it's one of those things where basketball is a, is a game of feeling. You have to believe in the moves you make. So I just kind of took that advice and made it my own. And I ended up loving the game a lot more. I actually started looking at the game as, as like with music, it was about creating and just mm -hmm. putting what's in my mind into a song. And I started looking at basketball in the same way. It was like, I'm now creating every move to the basket. Every shot is a creation. So it just kind of changed my process. Like growing up for you, like for me, like people always compare me to my dad also, right? Because my dad is a basketball photographer as well. So they always compare me. Everybody knows my dad in Indonesia for like in the basketball world. So it's kind of hard for me to, Got out of his sh uh, shadow, you know? What about you, though? You know, you got the same, you got the same last name. I got different last name with my dad. So you got the <laughs> same last name with your dad. How hard was it, though, for you growing up to, you know, just get out of your dad's shadow? Like, because um, a lot of people are always asking about you and your dad, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think, I think it's one of those things where I don't think you'll ever truly get out yeah. of his shadow. Um, but to me, it's not a, it's not a bad thing. Like, mm -hmm. he, he was great. He's one of the best mm -hmm. to ever play the sport. Mm -hmm. and I play the same sport that's it's pretty <laughs> tough to to escape that but at the same time I have to be myself and 
I think we play the game in, in different ways. And I'm his son, but at the same time, I think it's one of those things that has never bothered me that he is a Hall of Famer. It's, it's only been uh, motivation to me to know that I can try and, and try to do the same thing. Um, so for me, uh, that's always been my approach to it. And at the end of the day, it's, it's something that my, me and my father, basketball is something that I play for myself. I, mm. I play because I love the game. And a lot of people will look at it as they expect you to be your father when you play. And that kind of makes it tough in a way. But for me, I have to believe that I can over, overcome that. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope, I hope you will, uh, you will be able to overcome that because yeah, man, we got to make a, a name for ourselves too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> And uh, last question, what is, uh, what is your dream in basketball? Do you still have a dream that you want to achieve in basketball? Um, my dream is still the same as it's always been. I've, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to play against the best. So um wherever that is if it's overseas if it's in the nba if it's in the backyard if it's in the neighborhood it doesn't matter to me i just want to play against the best and showcase those skills yeah, yeah, yeah. and one more thing what's your basketball what's your favorite basketball moment in your career so far <laughs> uh, i think Hmm. that's a tough one because it's it before it was my it was my first dunk okay uh, I, i heard about that dunk in the yeah, middle, it, in middle it, school in yeah middle it was school. it was to me it was like yeah. oh my goodness I'm, i'm adam the glide <laughs> <laughs> but uh i think one of my first mvps uh oh, wow. playing overseas when i when i got one of my first mvps and and At the, during the game, I didn't think anything of it. I was like just in a zone. I didn't think about how many points I had. I didn't think about anything but the score. Uh, I was just trying to win for my team. And, and at the end of the game, they call my name as the MVP. And it just kind of struck me as like, oh, wow. Like these people admired my play. Yeah. So it just kind of kind of let me know that it that you know even though you're Clyde Drexler's son you still made an impact today and, and you achieved something so to me that just it was just so awesome and, and meeting some of the people that were cheering for you and, and, and go to the games and hearing their stories and, and meeting those people has just been amazing for me so I think that's my favorite basketball memory is just being around people that love basketball that's when you drop 30 points right i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that game i saw i saw the highlights yesterday i was like oh yeah man <laughs> you got a game too you know? <laughs> but let's talk about that dog though in middle school i think your coach bet you like what five bucks yeah it's just five bucks <laughs> if i could go in and dunk a basketball and I, honestly at the time i never really tried oh uh, shit i hit how, it how tall were you though I was around six three at the time, oh, so I just like I was on my way to lunch, yeah. and the coach was like, "Hey, you're getting pretty tall." I was like, "I am." So and he was like, "Well, let's see if you can dunk." Passes me the ball, five dollars. I'm like, <laughs> "Okay, let me try this." I jump up, and I. I actually hit my oh. wrist on the rim because I dumped so hard. It was red afterwards. And after that, I didn't go to lunch that day. Oh, shit. Get in the gym and just dumped all day. I bet. <laughs> It must be a nice for the rest of that For the rest of that year, anytime I was in the gym, I was trying to dump. Wow. Must be nice, though. <laughs> I, 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 I dumped before, but it was like when I was in college, though. College, I was, I was able to dump, but not in oh. Not in middle school though. You were like six three in middle school. Well, I was. It was actually my first oh. first year of high school. So oh, I, freshman. Okay. Yeah, freshman year. Yeah. Oh shit! Freshman, you were like yeah. six three. Yeah, I hit a growth spurt 
I went to stage three, and then when I got to college, I grew again. I had another growth spurt. Oh, shit. Did you play Santa in high school? Um, mm. Yeah, I played, I think my, my sophomore year, I played power forward. Okay. And I was just, I had like one shot. I would, I had a corner mid-range jumper, and that's what I, that's how I scored all my points. And then junior year, I started handling a bit more. And then senior year, by that time, I was running guard, so... Um, for me, it was just about making sure that I improve my game. I just wanted to outwork everybody. What do you think your natural position though? Um, honestly, for me, it's anything. Like, uh, I'm kind of one of those players that I can fill pretty much any role. Um, I like to emulate my game off of, uh, Jimmy Butler, actually. Okay. Wow. He's one of those guys that whatever needs to be done on the court he just goes out and does it and for me whether that's you know rebounding you know playmaking shooting scoring whatever it is defense I, I just try to make sure that that I can cover all my bases and do whatever we need to do to get the win he's a dog though yeah. Jimmy Butler oh, yeah. he is a dog yeah yeah I love Jimmy Butler too but who's your favorite player in India uh favorite player right um, now right now I grew up with right. I, I've always been a huge fan of Carmelo Anthony, actually. <laughs> That's my guy. That's my okay. favorite player of all time. Melo. Yeah, he just, he's, he's got such an amazing game. He's so good at, the, at, at scoring. I, I just love watching him. So the fact that he's still doing it today is, is amazing. No one can stop Melo on the post. <laughs> on the post, man, can I stop him, man. He has the best footwork. He's so strong. <laughs> but yeah. people are always surprised though when I say like, because my team is the Clippers. That's my okay. favorite team. People are so surprised. I've been I've been uh, a Clipper fan since 2003. Uh, oh. During Darius Miles, Quinton Richardson days, I've been a fan, and mm. I'm. My favorite player is Carmelo Anthony because mm -hmm. Car I met Carmelo a couple of times. He was so nice, man. That's why yeah. like he's like my favorite player. Mm -hmm. But is your team uh, is, is Portland your team though right now? Uh, I'd say they're always going to be probably my favorite team, um, unless it's an NBA team that I'm playing for. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, like I I'm always cheering for Portland just because okay. that's that's the hometown. Uh, so, and, and also one of my favorite. Um, NBA, of all the NBA teams that I've kind of had an opportunity with, I think Portland, I had the most fun out there. Just, it just seemed like basketball was, was just pure at, at that point. And we were all just having fun playing, competing against each other. So I really liked the, the Blazers organization. Hold on. You went, you, you got an opportunity to work out with the Blazers too? Yeah, it was, um, oh. it was before summer league, they have a mini session where they get a few veterans and, and some pros from overseas to kind of play against their so them, some of the people that are there on the roster. So we have like 15 guys and we just play for like a week straight and just mm -hmm. play basketball. Who was there though? Um, it was, when I was there, it was Rodney Stuckey. Okay, Rodney Stuckey's uh, a baller. Yeah, Thornton. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Marcus Thornton? Yeah, Marcus Thornton. Marcus Thornton. He okay. was there. Oh, he's uh, a shooter. Caleb Swanigan was there. Who is that? Uh, Caleb Swanigan. He was he was a big man. Oh, Caleb, 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 Caleb. Yeah, yeah Swanigan. He was yeah, with yeah. The Blazers. And yeah. um, Alec Baldwin was there. Dane Dane was there. Dane was there. Yeah. Did you get a chance to play against Dane? Nah, I. Uh, you know, other than like guard and okay. guard workouts that we would do. I mean, he was mostly just there to kind of get shots up, and he was kind of hanging out on vacation. So. Okay. But everybody else was just competing every day and having a it was kind of like with Houston, you have a whole bunch of vets, a whole bunch of guys from overseas and then players that are on the NBA roster. And you're just kind of making sure that everyone's playing their hardest and getting better. So it was really good. Man, that's yeah, man. Uh, NBA opportunity is always good, you know, even though we're just working out with them, you know, just to see their routines, yeah. you know, and how they uh, go by themselves, you know, it's, it's really nice. But Adam, thank you so much, though, for sharing for your story. Me. Yes, man. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you so much for taking your time today. Really appreciate you. And I'm excited. We're all excited, probably, you know, to see you play in IBL. 
uh, safe travel to Indonesia. Get ready for the 18 hour flight. <laughs> <laughs> you better be ready for that. Um, what else? Uh, if you need any help, you have any question, you can always hit me on my DM. You know, I got you. Uh, right, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. If you, if you come back, like we for sure got to go hang out. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. If I go to Houston, cause actually one of our legends, uh, he, he's actually a trainer now in Houston. He's, oh, really? he's training, uh, he's training kids at shoot 360 in Houston. Oh, I've heard of that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so I might need to visit, I'm, I might need to visit him, and then I'm gonna visit you too one day All in Houston, right, right on. yeah, and we'll connect for sure. But hopefully, I'm gonna see you in Indonesia, though. I'm gonna yeah, yeah, up. that's yeah. Awesome. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna hit you up when I get to Indonesia for real. And yeah, once again, Adam, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate thank you so much. Yeah, guys, yeah. thank you so much, guys, for watching today's episode. Hopefully, you guys enjoy our conversation, and yeah, we'll see you guys again on the next episode. Peace out.